Hey everybody, welcome back to another video on this channel and with Nuxt 3.8 release, there has been an amazing addition to use fetch and use async data. Let's check out what it is. All right, most of you hot, hot. So caching is a very, very common and important mechanism throughout the whole web development world and probably even beyond that. But Today we'll not focus on the server side, we'll not talk about Nitro and route rules and define cached event handler, that's for another video in the future. We will talk about the client side. Because in Nux's latest version, 3.8, there has been an addition to use fetch and use async data, which is the get cache data function. With it, we can avoid unnecessary or superfluous refetches of data and even define our own caching mechanism to avoid these refetches. Let's have a look. All right, we have a very standard and plain Nuxt application. Version 3.8, as mentioned before, the Nuxt config is empty and we only have an index page and an about page, both just linking to each other and saying on which page they are. Okay, next we want to fetch some data because, well, that would be good if we want to cache them eventually. So let's use use fetch here. And I really like the I can has dead joke API for some juicy dead jokes. Also, we want to set the headers here to ensure that the API will not re return plain text, but JSON, that's an API specific thing. And now let's log data.joke here. Also, maybe let's type that with any here because for the sake of the video, we're a bit lazy, no big deal. All right, and let's check out the browser now and see what will be returned. Here we go, the index page, and we got a nice joke. What do you call dictionary and drugs? High definition. Well, it's a good one though, but let's see what happens if you go to the about page, like navigating around and back to the index page. And we see, oh, that's, that's another joke. That's a different one. And the API has been called. And same happens if we navigate again and again. And that's great if we want to refresh the data, but what if we say, okay, every user gets one random joke that is persisted throughout the lifetime of the application. So until there's a hard reload. Well, it's possible and let's implement that straight away in the code. So to do that, as mentioned before, we use get cache data and the key that's present here as an argument, as a parameter, um, that's the key that Nuxt used to save the data, which is fetched by use fetch or use async data, similar way, inside the payload. So what we want to do next is we actually, or what we want to do next, is to get the Nuxt app in here because we need it in a bit. Because somehow we need to access the data based on that key. And we can do that by saying, okay, let's in here return Nuxt app dot payload dot data. So if it's in the payload or Nuxt app dot static data. So that way we ensure if the data has been fetched by use fetch, then we can definitely get it. These are two different ways depending on Okay, are you hydrating? Are you not hydrating yet? Um, and I don't want to go too much into internals here, but that's the easy way to go. But what get cache data actually is doing is if you return a knowledge value, that means, oh, please refetch the data or fetch the data if you haven't fetched it yet. So if you just return nothing like this, it will always just fetch data from use fetch. That's the default behavior. But if you return anything else, well, then exactly that data will be used. And of course, you have all the chances here to use whatever you want. So we can even define our own little caching mechanism in a bit. So right now what this is doing is, okay, if the data is fetched already, just return it. And otherwise, please fetch it. So once again, let's jump in the browser and have a look what's happening. Okay, and here we go. The hard reload is in. We see the, another joke, that's fine. And what happens if we switch to the about page and back? And Yes, we achieved it. It's the same joke. Perfect. Also, no API calls happening. The XHR filter, it's all empty. That's great. So we just fetch it once. So if we refresh the page, takes a little bit, we get another joke that happens on, on the server side. There is no XHR call here, except for the manifest. We can ignore that. And once again, if we switch, that's all fine. But what now if we want to say, okay, it's great. The random joke is nice, but Somehow we want to change the data um, after a certain TTL has passed. So to do that, 
first, I would suggest we have some kind of um, fetched at um, date because without the date, like a TTL date, what should we do? Um, and either you get that from your API, that's nice, but here we just build our own ones with the transform function. The transform function just takes the input, so the return of use fetch, and now we can customize it to our liking. So let's just return everything from input here and also a fetched at uh, attribute, which is equivalent to new date. So this is basically our base on TTL. Now we know when this was fetched and in the get cache data down here, well, we can adapt that and we can use it. So first let's do the following. Let's just say const data. So we get the data here. If it's not there, which can happen if no data has been fetched yet, let's just return because that's the indicator. Hey, please get cache data. Don't do anything. Get the data just as usual. Good. Nice. What's next? Well, or what's next? We have to check is the data too old and how do you do that? Well, the good part is we have this fetched ad that's in data.fetched ad. It's right in there. So let's just create something called, I don't know, expiration date here with new dates around that. And let's set the time. I would always suggest to use something like date functions for that or lux and day uh, JS or whatnot. I will just do it bare bone here. And let's just say, let's get the time and we add 10 seconds to it. So 10 times 1000, 10,000 milliseconds, seconds, fine. And now let's create an is expired variable that will just check if data is too old or not. So let's take the expiration date with the new time. So like expiration date in 10 seconds and check if the current time is bigger. So if the date is already passed and now we say if it's expired, then once again, we return, which means here we fetch data because as you remember, returning something nullish, which is undefined or null. And if you just write returns, very equivalent to return undefined, we're good to go. And otherwise we take the happy path of, okay, if it's not expired, if there is data, cool, let's just return it. So, okay, we have a joke. We go back and forth, nothing happens. Perfect. No API call, nothing, but ah, there we go. The 10 seconds already passed too quick and we get another joke. The API was hit correctly. That's just because our get cache data function was triggered. And here, once again, whew, 10 seconds are just too fast. Usually you should put, I guess, two minutes or something. So whenever the user would like get the data, get cache data will be evaluated and checked. Should it refetch or should it just return the old one? And that's exactly what we want. We build our own little caching system. Of course, this is very rudimentary. You can improve it by a lot, but now you know what the idea of it is. All right, let's summarize it. Nux 3.8 introduced an amazing new function as an option for use fetch and use async data, which is called get cache data. With it, you can build your own little cache around use fetch and use async data, either saying don't refetch data at all, just use it as soon as it's there and then hard refresh, there will be a new one, or even define your own TTL system and logic to refresh the data if it's necessary. And after that, I'm more than sure that some of you will jump straight away in the project and implement their own version of get cache data. So after that, please let me know, will you use it after all? Did it work out? And how does your custom logic look like? What will you use it for your use cases? I'm really curious to know all of them. Also, if the whole video helps you, please let me know in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel to don't miss out any further videos about Nuxt, Vue, TypeScript, JavaScript, and so on. See you in the next one and happy hacking.